wacko world we live in. Do you know what I like about these masks? Look. <sighs> Any heavy breathing, I can't see a thing. Huh. So I'm down here, St Audrey's Bay. It's going to be a cold one tonight, but it's flat calm. See, I've had to do this, guys. I've absolutely had to come because I feel there's a chance. I'm on my own. I haven't got any contacts down there. I'm just doing it on my own. I've kept some mackerel from one of the uh, uh, self-drive trips that I do. I've got about six mackerel. I'm going to try and catch a conger eel from the shore. It's the right time of year. I'll tell you about it in a minute. But first, a quick cup of tea. Because I've been two and three quarter hours driving with one bearing, driving one wheel bearing. It's got to be repaired. And I'm obviously racing around, hence the mask. Yes, looking at yet another lockdown. Anyway, it is when I'm filming this. Sort of semi-lockdown, really. Um, and um, I'm out. I'm I'm out trying to catch a fish. <laughs> I hope the fish haven't got a locked jaw to go with a locked down. Anyway, you see, you've seen these before. I oh, mean, it's nice and toasty. It's going to be tough going out there today, guys. Or tonight. I'm doing a night trip, by the way. Got kitchens. I bought a sleeping bag because they're closed down, you know, for the winter. Yeah, they're all stripped. All I've got is the bed. I don't know if there's anything in there. I've got the Hoover, I could, I could cuddle up to the Hoover, but I just literally got a sleep, sleeping bag. I say, I guess I must moth all these down. So let's hope come the spring that everything gets back to normal. But the sun is beautiful out there, but it's going to be very, very cold. I'm going to have a quick cuppa, and then I'm going to go down and look at the sea because it's coming in. Graham does that every single day. Well, what happens? Nobody really is able to tell me this, but even down on the south coast boat fishing, the conger eels tend to be moving over the open ground, I'm going to say that. Look, if you go conger eel fishing, generally you're over reef, that type of thing. Not generally over an open beach, they like to have cover, because that's where they catch a small fish and eat small pouting, whiting, whatever else they eat, crabs. So they like rocks, they like snags, they like features. Here it's an open beach, but close by are some sort of low water reefs, that's, and this is a spring tide. So the tide has gone out a gazillion yards. Uh, it will also mean that a tide comes in quickly. Good old Madeira cake. The conger eels move all over the ground. So they tend to come out of their little hidey holes and, and quarter about and, it, and they're covering ground. So the chances of them stumbling on my bait might be, might be quite good. And I was always told down here, Somerset, on the Somerset coastline, yes, big rise and fall in tide. No monster congers, no monster congers here, but there's always a good chance of catching one, you know, a nice size one, three feet long, something like that. I'm grateful to catch anything beach fishing nowadays, it's got so hard, believe me, anything will do. So what happens is, when it gets really cold in our winter, and the beaches freeze, and they do freeze as in freeze freeze, because I've been down here in January and February and times like that, it gets really cold, they, they go, they don't like that really, really cold weather. So I'm hoping I've got it just right. Mid-November was always my best beach fishing time for cod as well. So um, I'm on mackerel, that's all I've got. I'm on mackerel and Madeira cake. I might have to put the Madeira cake on with some bait thread. Mm. Anyway, quick cover and we go down and have a look at the beach because it's low water. Now, ordinarily, I will be straight down fishing, but I've tried to make a distinction with the tide and I've come just for the tide. Now, as well as the caravans here, look. Oh, caravans are mobile home ground, mobile home as well as these. You've got chalets as well. So there's no shortage of accommodation here. This is where I'm going to be going. 
down these steps. You've probably seen it in some of our other films. Working my way down there. It's just strange there's nobody here. Look at that. I mean, goodness me, that's worth coming. Just as it is. Now, I've got to wait for the tide to fill up here. I've got quite a long time to wait. Over there, I'll show you. Over there, that big, big mound over there is Minehead. And around the corner from that is Watch It, where we've does the uh, films with Tomo. Over here is the Welsh coast. Let's put this on the tripod, it'll be a bit easier. As well as the residential, large residential homes they got at St A's, worth mentioning these smaller wooden chalets. I stayed in them and they can be cold in the autumn and early in the spring as well. Generally, those caravans, they got all the gas central heating, it's home from home, it's just down the beach and there is the beach. But look as I zoom in at the size, the extent of this huge reef system that you can see. This is probably dead low water there. But it's an absolutely massive reef system and this is what would bring a lot of fish in. Now this island in the distance, I think this one is called Steep Holm, I think it is. And over to the left, this is further looking up in the Bristol Channel, is a shallower one called Flat Holm. And I want to know why the lighthouse is on the shallow one. Surely the big one would be the one to hit with the boat. That's where I'm going to be fishing, over that band of sand you can see. If I pan up. You can see, not quite as extensive of, of, of a rock reef system, but out there about, I'm going to say 200, 300 yards, is yet another reef system under the water, because I can see the tide rip across the top of it. So if you were boat fishing, just outside of that, I reckon it would be a really good place to fish. You know, this was a reasonably sized uh, spring tide, and it shows up there, you can see the current flowing across the top. And just look at all these lots of little channels that you've got there. Little small, they're almost like miniature little canyons. And I'm sure that shrimps and crabs and stuff and other, let's say, rock gobies, who knows, lots of little fish, uh, prawns go in amongst those gullies. And I'm sure the fish know to hunt in there as well. But of course, you've got to wait until it uh, comes in and it fills up and gets covered with water. Now, there's a really big gully there. You can see that's almost a feeder stream to the inside beach here. So that big channel is going to feed right in and the water will probably fill up there. That's why I pretty well picked in front of the caravan because I figure that's going to fill up first. As I pull back here, you can see from the size of these people on that sandy beach, just exactly how big it is. Because I'm going to be not even fishing there. My bait is hopefully going to be in the middle of that sand that those people are standing on. So a vast area of rough in the background and a nice patch of sand for me to put my bait over. Got to watch out for old groins there. As you can see those wooden great big sleepers in the water because at high water, my bait will be just over the edge of those boulders and I might wind into it. I'm going to be fishing down the base of this cliff. Tide is starting to push in now and that's all I've got to wait for. That is a sort of downside of the Bristol Channel is that you can't fish huge tides. There's one of the boats, two of the boats there. I guess one might be Tomo out there from Watch It. And look how close to shore they fish, guys. How close do the fish come? Well, I'm not exactly uh, restaurant cuisine, but survival for tomorrow. So, I've had a good look at the beach. You can only wait for the tide now. I think, for beginners, I know other people have already seen it, I've just shown the rig going to be used. I'm not sure whether to go for one hook or two, really not. But now's the time to make a decision. I've got the trusty old sleeping bag and pillow and a couple of bonus blankets. I'm going to set the bed up uh, in there so when I come in tonight, which will be about, I guess I'll past 10, 11 o'clock, something like that, I'm going to be frozen. Got a hot water bottle, I'm going to put that in the bed to help, you know, keep it aired and warm. Um, the heating is on in here, it's going to be so difficult going out tonight. Anyway, I'll get this bed down, I'll show you guys the rig. One thing I always bring, a towel. You know why? No, not just for having a wash. I've had a shower before I came down. I won't be using the shower down there. You've got a good shower as well. Put it over your head. You know when you're sleeping like this, get it over the top of your head because being metal sided in the winter with these, any metal sided one, it's going to get colder. Temperature will drop. Um, so just a tip for me: if you can keep your head warm, you well, you should sleep okay. And of course, for those of you of ancient years, there's no way I'm going out and there's a chance it might hit freezing tonight without a pair of these puppies. That's right, 
Long Johns. Thermal Long Johns. Oh, don't laugh. Look, I've already got the vest. I'm not stupid. Just boiling up here in the corner. Not for a cup of tea. That's later tonight. I'm going to fill these guys up. I'm going to put them in there, in the bed, so it gets pre warm because my sleeping bag might have got cool, might have got damp, you know, where I store it, who knows. As my grandmother said, son, don't get a chill on your kidneys, it's terrible. Why? I've never known. 60 years later I've never known. Chill on your kidneys. Ah, oh, well I've just been down, seen the beach. It's filled up a little bit. It's going to come in fast because it's a spring tide, but it's going to take an hour and a half. Now normally, under normal circumstances, I come down, I'm down here, not dawn, I'm never doing dawn, that's not happening. I'm down here early, and I go bait digging, messing around, doing this, doing that, rushing two hours here, two hours there. I've scrubbed that totally, so I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit sort of lost really, I've got to be honest, because I'm trying to do the way it should be done. In America, they call it, be there when they bite, meaning don't waste your time. You know, but I just like fishing. I just like being out fishing. But obviously here, <laughs> there's no water at the moment. <clears throat> I could go to a low water mark. I can't be bothered. I'm just hedging all my bets. I want to catch one conger eel because I've had a pretty dire beach fishing year this last year. It's been, a lot of you guys know what it's like out there. Go around blank, scratching, blank, one, two little fish. It's pretty dire. Or you go out middle of the night. Well... I'm not good at that either, you know, I've done all that, I've done it all, so it doesn't hold that same burning desire. So hopefully this time, I've got it right. Just coming off of spring tides, that's a big tide, so it's hopefully dropping off by about two days. A lot of movement in the water, my only concern is when you have the peak of the spring tides, as it drops, it's dumping the weed out there, there could be an awful lot of weed. I could have, well shot my last bullet or whatever the saying is because if it's a lot of weed there I've come two and three quarter hours for absolutely nothing I won't be able to fish I'm going to stay the night obviously and then I'm going to try and hit the beach in the morning so the rig I'm going to be using although I'm over over that uh, sand I'm trying to cast over that sand don't want to go too far I'll be in the snags don't want to drop it too short I'll be in the boulders on these little winders these little winders are the pulley rig just so anybody's for beginners. If you were super duper advanced catching loads of big fish, move along, you'll learn nothing from me. Right, the rig's principle is this. Here, you clip your lead on one end. You pre-make you pre-make these rear well, you have to pre-make them if it's a snaggy area. This is a grip lead that has I've got a couple of support wires. Just all for beginners, and sometimes we get a lot of love fishermen watching as well. You cast this out, it digs in the sand, and you're going to need that because there's big tides. It's big tides down here in Somerset. <clears throat> I think the Bristol Channel has something like, is it a 38 feet rise and fall in tidal height? I think it's the second biggest in the world to, is it the Bay of Fundy over in Newfoundland or somewhere? It's a lot of water. So you cast out, this grip holds your bait out there. When you want to pull in or you've got a fish on, you pull and these legs trip out, these wires trip out. Obviously they're now facing the other way, so it slides across the sand. Even better is the pulley rig, because I'll show you what it's like. I'll go from the hook end. There's a hook, and I'm seriously thinking of changing to putting two double hooks on it, I'm not sure. My theory is two hooks are better. I fish with the guys down here who fish, and they fish two hooks and they catch. You can get snagged up as well. That's the thing. You've got twice as many hooks to get snagged up with. Bait up here. A hook. Let's say two feet of whatever trace you want. A swivel. Another piece of what we call shot feeder, which say this is about 60. And then a pulley bead, which is this black bead here. There's my lead. Look, my lead's hanging on there like normal. The bead is there. I'll do this in close up in a minute. You tie, what you do is you thread, for beginners, thread the line through the rings, bring it down and tie on to that black plastic bead, right? So your fishing line's on there. I can't get a fishing rod in there, I can't show you. Imagine it. Then, when you, you've got your bait, you obviously set your wires 
and you can squeeze these and pinch them in, make them tight to give them different tensions. This particular one has little black um, bits of rubber or something slotted over them to go in there. So they're all clipped on there. <coughs> Excuse the throat, I hope you haven't got coronavirus. They sterilise this place totally. Look, this is what it's like, this is what we're living in now. That's the checklist, a massive checklist they have to have done every single time someone's travelled to this unit. So it's pristine at the moment and I hope to leave it pristine. I've tied on there, I've got my lead clipped on there. There is my bait, imagine it, yes you've got to use your imagination. And then all you do is clip this on to a little bait retaining hook retaining clip there. If you can see that, it's, it's sort of easy once you've got them. It's, ever, it's really tricky to do when it's not on a rod. So it's, it's like this. I'm tied up here. Here is, imagine it. I go whizz, boom. This hits the water first, being the lead. Okay, water jets up. This is this particular lead called an impact lead. As the water jets up there, it pushes that hook off. Bingo. This is swinging loose. And then, some have got, look, I'll show you as well. This, this one actually does have a bait clip above the impact lead. So it doesn't ping off like that. Same thing, can you see it's just held there. Whizz! It's a long cast, I'm waiting. Plop in the water, the impact will shake that hook off. So two rigs, but here we are fishing away like this. Along comes Mr. Fish, snuffle, 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 picks up the bait, winds down as he goes to move, uh, he winds down? As he takes the bait and moves off, you see the bite up here, you wind down, you hook the fish. Now ordinarily you'd be dragging this lead along the bottom into the snags before the fish, but with a pulley rig, as you pull, here's the fish, hooked up over there. Smith. Get out from under there. Boy's trouble. I knew I shouldn't have bought him. As you hook the fish, this bead here, you'll see this. Let's say, I can't hook it to anything. Yes, I can. The window handle. The owner's not here, is he? Oh, Jim. Right, so I'm hooked up to the fish. As I pull, this happens. Look. The lead comes up. Look, watch. On a pulley. Can you see how it's working? like this. So as I'm fighting, the fish is back here, my rod's up there, I'm pulling the fish in, but I'm trying to keep this lead here up out of the snags. So I just release it a bit, watch. See it coming down? Hopefully you can see this. So as you wind in, you go boom, hook the fish up, the lead is up higher than it would normally be. And that's pretty much how a pulley rig works. Now, you can fish really big baits and put double hooks on it, which is a panel hook, if you look, we've got some bait rigs up with Tomo, who's just down the road to watch it. I think he's out. He might not be out tonight. He's out today. <clears throat> Obviously, he's flat calm. He's going to fish every day he can. Um, on the Long Lagoon, and he's done some bait rig ones for us. So I'm going to go through my hook uh, box here and see whether I'm just going to chance putting a bigger hook on. And I might even just give him a little touch with a stone, sharpen half of it. I've certainly got the time. Well, people, it's plainly obvious it's dark. I've had this bag pile I've rigged up. I haven't showed you all the rigging and baiting up. So I want to get bait all fast. I've only got like three hours. I've got a jumbo offer in there of Atlantic prawns, suggested by Tomo and mackerel. 
I may or may not clip it down, I might just lob it down as far as I can go because at the moment I'm not getting pushed back, I just need to get it out there. So bear with me when I get it out. Got to get one in the water, haven't I, straight away. I, uh, I don't think I'm going to clip it down. The tide's coming in so fast, I think we can still reach the sand. I'm going to risk that one there. I'm going to have a light on it for a while. I'll get the other two rods out. Can't you think without floodlight? Well, I've got no way moment of knowing. I've got a third rod. I'm just going to fish that. With like a plain bomb there. Regular plain bomb. And I've just whipped onto a single hook. A uh, unpeeled North Atlantic prawn. Um, I may well clip this one down. But being a plain bomb, I don't know if the tide's going to pull it out of position but it's worth a throw. And I just think it's the sort of thing that might pick up a bass. I mean, I'm here for Congo. Uh, at this stage in the tide, there might be a bass moving in there. So um, I've got my other two out of grip legs. No idea what's happening with the tide at this stage. Uh, no vices yet, but I'm gonna have to start moving back eventually. Let's get this one out there. heard a shout. I think that one hit a guy on the Welsh coast. It's going to be noisy, the wind's picking up, but it is coming off my back, off those cliffs up there, which is, you know, gratefully accepted. What does happen sometimes is that wind going that way will lift up waves and lifts them up a bit and dumps them down with a big bang so I might get false bites and it also churns up the weed that's what I find out. Now it sounds not great on this camera and it won't pan it won't go to watch my hands I go it pixelates so I've got to get what I get. We've got three hours to try and catch what I want a conga. There's no moon up here I think it's coming up well later we might not see it it's absolutely black as you can want the plough is there, right there, the front of the saucepan's here, the handle's there, and I can tell you that one up there is north, that's the pole star there. So north is here, that is a due south wind at the moment. So, with north there, I know the caravans to the south, they won't get lost, will I? Just follow the smell of the spaghetti bolognese, the empty tin. See what's interesting, it's so dark tonight, it's absolutely pitch black. But my reflective tape I put on, what, a year or two ago? I've whipped it on, it's on one of our films. I got the reflective tape off, tape off one of those yellow jackets and whipped it on. And you can see up there, it's standing out really well, as opposed to my normal one, which is just white paint. Just put my bait, I've got mackerel and those prawns in a bag because I'm about 30, 40 yards at the base of that cliff. I remember here once before a creature of nondescript identification ran off with my hand white rag. I don't know if it's rats or a fox. And I've actually an island, the island I was fishing there, the bass down on, I think it was an inch strand, it's in one of my books. And I photographed a fish running off with my bass about took the whole bass right next to me and ran off into the sand dunes. So, as I'm on limited bait, and I know I'm on limited time, I don't need to lose it to a rat's or a fox. Just a tip there, guys. Or you can put it on the centre of the tripod. Oh, 
work on this, it's uh, absolutely nothing. It's now, you've lost my watch, let's put that out for a second. Oh, the moon's right up there now, and there's absolutely nothing happening at all. I'm seeing the other gentleman catching it. I've not had a bite, I've not had a nibble. I don't understand it. I was talking to somebody texting them back down the south coast saying, years ago you would have two tides in November, which would be two spring tides. I'm on the first one. It was absolutely almost guaranteed cod, whiting, everything. That was the two tides we used to fish. <laughs> that was then and this is now. It's coming in, nice big waves coming in, bit of movement there, but absolutely nothing on the rod touch whatsoever. I mean, I've not even had a nibble now. Tomorrow, if I do blank, I'm still sticking with big baits. If I do blank tonight, it looks like I am. About half an hour to high water. Then I'll have to go to small baits tomorrow and try one big bait, maybe three flappers on small, and just see what's out there. But I mean, we've got good tides, good weather, good wind direction, no fish. Just look at the reflective tape up on the right hand rod up there. It's almost like shining back at me. Just seen, I think, a bite on the left hand long rod. I've just seen a pretty sure that was a pull down. It wasn't a big fish, it could have been weed in a wave, but definitely looked like something there. Well guys, save the blank, again, Mr. Dogfish. Well, at least we've got a fish. It might be the turn of the tide and something comes on the ebb. A smaller piece of mackerel, took the prawn off. And maybe I'll go with a bit of mackerel. Maybe they don't want the prawn at all. Let's get him back. That's the size of bait I was using, like. Particularly big. I'm going to send that out again. Money saves his money earned. Well, it's a fish anyway. It's getting near the top of the tide, you can hear by the waves. And maybe with the tide going the other way, you get a bit of a pull. If it gets a bit of pull or a draw on it, it might send the smell a different direction and it might be a congra. I can't understand the dogfish can find it. And the congra can't. I'm expecting a congra. It's a bite on the right hand one, guys. I've just seen a bite on that one up there. Bite on the right hand, uh, on that left hand right there. there.
guys, doggy guys. Tune this light down a bit for you. I think he had two goes at it. I don't think he was on there the first time. He's on there now. So no conga. I think I've got about 30, 40 minutes of tide left. I want to know is where's my conga in? Another dogfish. I'm now known as Billy Three Dogs. Should be Billy No Conga. I think the tide going out like this goes, I think I'm going to leave that same bait on. So there we go. Gone to the dogs. It's better than a blank. No Conga. I don't understand. No Conga. But there was something, I thought it was a white plastic bag going around in the water. And obviously the tide's going out, I've got like down to the five minute warning, so there's going to be no congress. Come and take a look at this. This is really rubbing salt in the wound, I think. This white plastic bag that was washing around. See, the tide has dropped back a huge amount now. So I thought, that's unusual, why is it not still in the water? Now where is it? There it is, there it is, look. This is the white plastic bag that I thought washing around. Well, that's not very nice, is it? Here I am trying to catch a fish, and there was what I thought was a white plastic bag. I'm guessing a thornback ray by all the thorns along here. Who knows what that died of? It didn't die of anything I caused, that's for sure. Is it died naturally? Oh, it smells a bit natural. Oh, oh man, that hustle. I kind of wonder if one of those dog walkers comes down in the morning. I'd be interested to see if that's still there, because I'm going to come down here in the morning, I'm just about to pack up. I'll come down in the morning, I wonder if there's any more here, fire this. I don't think I see any more there. And there might be, there might be a dog in the morning that gets it. I'm sort of done here now. The moon up there, the other guy was uh, saying he didn't turn uh, like the moon. I think he must be a local, which he doesn't like it. They say the new moon is better than this one's just coming off of the full moon up there, you can see it. I'm not a lover of the moon, I must admit like that. Except for tuna fishing, really good for tuna. Full moons, big tides, full moon. I'm about three days off from the big tide. So I thought I would be plumb on, I thought it would be plumb on from Conga. Not to be, I'm down to the five minute warning. Back to the van. Get some sleep and I'll put the alarm on for uh, relatively early doors, 6, 6.30. It's going to be cold. Come down and see if it's in the daytime. If I get a bite in the daytime for a conga, it makes you wonder, is it up there that that moon is putting them off? Probably not, but you know what, us anglers are like, we've got to have an excuse, haven't we? All right, five minutes, guys. Definitely, definitely had a bite on one of those. The other thing, I don't like all these birds sitting down over there. Can somebody complain to the council? 